As we go to the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline, joined by Andrew Catalan of the NFL on CBS on the television call this weekend for Titans and Broncos. Good morning, Andrew. How are you? Hey, guys. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. We're great, um, and, and this is such an interesting time for this Titans team. Second straight week, they play another team coming off of a bye, but uh, what do you make of this Titans team coming off of such a physical and, and taxing loss in primetime last weekend? Yeah, you know, I saw the Titans twice in person. I saw their win in Washington and then the home win against the Colts, so I've seen them already a couple of times, and then watching them on Sunday night in Kansas City, nothing surprised me in terms of their effort and energy. I think that's just become a staple under Mike Vrabel. Uh, obviously, I think the defense is a little worn out. I know that Vrabel adjusted practice a little bit from what I read just to give them a little breather here this week because I think they were on the field if you include penalties for about 100 plays, which is crazy. But, look, they went into Arrowhead with a quarterback making his second career start And they took the Chiefs to overtime, and I know there's no moral victories. I I get all that, but I'm still really impressed with the way that they played and then just coming up short against the Chiefs. And, Andrew, you've seen some classic performances by this Titans defense, including that incredible interception by David Long uh, to win that one. It it seems like people are not as surprised, right, when you talk about what this Titans defense is able to do and all the new faces on this defense that Mike Vrabel is just getting so much out of. Yeah, you know, we spoke with Kevin Byard before the Washington game, and that was a time where there were some people coming in and out of the lineup defensively, and obviously that's still going on. But, you know, Byard made a great point that they had so many injuries last year that it forced them to communicate with each other more because the guy next to you wasn't the same guy as the week before. And he thought that having gone through that last year has really served them well this year with some of the people in and out of the lineup. And that makes a lot of sense. And obviously, as you said, it starts with Mike Grable at the top. But, you know, there's a core nucleus there on defense led by Byard and Jeffrey Simmons and Danico Autry that that really have uh, formed that, that bond and that culture, I think, last year going through it. And now it's carried over to this year. Uh, Andrew, how is it calling a game where the focus point is it will be primarily in these games on defense uh, for both teams, which have both really good defenses and a run game and following a guy like Derrick Henry as we, you know, try to get and see what Russell Wilson is going to be for the rest of the season? It could be a fast moving game, right? I mean, I think (laughs) both these teams offensively are going to want to try to control the clock and You know, one matchup that I'm really looking forward to is the Titans have the number one red zone offense in the NFL and the Broncos have the number one red zone defense. And I think that that's going to be a big key to this game. Uh, But, yeah, to your point, you know, as you know, I'm sure you've talked about no wide receiver caught a pass last week. Who knows who's going to play quarterback for the Titans? Is Traylon Burks going to come back? Because I do think that would just add a different dimension to the offense for Tennessee. I mean, even if he's not 100% yet, I I think that – you know, some kind of spark like that could really help this Tennessee offense. But it could be one of those, you know, 14, 13 games. Um, but, you know, I think it'll be a great atmosphere. It always is down there. And it seems to me that the fans have really rallied around this Tennessee defense, and that makes it exciting for me as well. And when you get to this portion of the year where it's, I think it's supposed to be a little brisk this weekend uh, in Nashville, do, do you hear coaches and players put an emphasis on what wins games, meaning like the line of scrimmage? Do they have a, a bigger focus point on like running the ball instead of passing the ball? Yeah, I mean, I think that it'll be colder, but I don't know how much, you know, the the precipitation doesn't look like it's going to be a problem. I think that would maybe be more of an issue in a game like this. But, you know, Denver, you know, Denver's playing some cold weather games, and I think the Titans will be ready for that as well. And um, Yeah, I mean, I think this time of year, you know, you want to be able to run the football. You, you, I think that's a big key um, to, to, you know, trying to put a division away or try to clinch a playoff for it. They're going to need Derrick Henry to, you know, keep riding him. And, you know, Denver's got an interesting collection of running backs. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a strange group. It's Melvin Gordon, Latavius Murray, Chase Edmonds now, and Marlon Mack. Uh, it's kind of like a, a collection of guys from across the league. I'm not sure how they're going to use all them. Uh, but for Denver, you know, I, I saw them week two in Houston, uh, when they beat Houston, um, this is a strange team, guys. I mean, you know, it seems like maybe they found a little something in London. 
trying to rally around their coach. As you pointed out, they're coming off a bye. Uh, one guy that I think is interesting is the tight end, Greg Dulcich. He wasn't around early in the year. Mm-hmm. It seems like Russell is, is eyeing him a little bit more. And, and almost like everyone is against this Denver team is the way that they kind of feel. I mean, I, obviously that starts with the head coach who's criticized almost every game for his clock management and the number of penalties. Russell Wilson's had an uneven year, if not just mediocre uh, at best. Uh, but maybe they found a little like chip that they can use to try to build a little momentum here. I think it's going to be interesting to see how they come out coming off the bye. Yeah, one thing about this Titans defense that they've admitted to when we've asked them about it, it, it's always about we've got to stop giving up those big plays, pass plays in particular. Kevin Byard told me yesterday in the locker room, he said, look, no offense to Kansas City at all because their wide receivers are good, but I would argue the Broncos might have a better crop. What would you say about that and what makes them so hard to defend? Because I think they all have their own skill set. Yeah, I think to your point, the scary thing is Jerry Judy's playing really well right now, and mm-hmm. he can be a home run threat. Cortland Sutton is a very underrated receiver, although he's been kind of quiet of late. I would worry about him busting out. And K.J. Hamler is a guy that can take the top off a of defense. He's got great speed. We saw it with a 47-yard catch on the game-winning drive against Jacksonville in London a couple of weeks ago. It just doesn't seem like all these pieces have fit together yet and that's the concern if you're a titans fan you just don't want this to be the week when they put it all together and i think a lot of it starts with russell wilson i mean i he's just not having a great year um you know some of its injuries some of its new teammates i mean i think that there's a lot going on there but i think that he's still a very capable quarterback he threw for 340 yards week one in seattle um there's it's it's there it just hasn't all been put together yet and i don't know if it will be it it could it could uh, i think with the first year head coach that's a that's a big question Uh, he's calling the plays as well so that's another part of the equation um but there are pieces there to your point and and arguably a, a pretty good receiving core when they're all on the same page well, Derrick Henry is back on top in terms of rushing yards, uh, you know, leading the league right now. He's fifth straight game with over 100 yards rushing. D- does he surprise you at all? And just what I think he felt underestimated coming into this year, especially when a guy within his own division, Jonathan Taylor, was getting all the love. Does he surprise you at all when you're watching a game? Like, what is it like to watch that dude run? <laughs> It's pretty crazy because you never know which one he's going to either run someone over or take it to the house. I mean, what's funny to me is you look at the carries on the rest of the team. I mean, Dontrell Hilliard has 17, Hassan Haskins has 10, and Derrick Henry has 183. And it's like, well, how does this happen? How does he continually get 20 carries a game and, you know, continue to run guys over? I, I think the big thing for me is that over the years, he's been stronger in the fourth quarter in the second half. And as a team, that's one thing I think Tennessee has to get better at. They have to be better in the second half of games. They can't build these leads and expect to hang on as they play, you know, a different part of their schedule. So I think Henry's a big part of that. If he can, you know, get back to bulldozing guys in the fourth quarter and kind of spark this team to to play better in the second half, because we've seen they haven't this year. I think that's a big part of Tennessee here in the second half of the season. Andrew Catalan with us from NFL on CBS on the call this weekend for Titans and Broncos in Nissan Stadium. Uh, Andrew, you mentioned kind of the disconnect with Russell Wilson and, and it not really clicking yet for that offense. What do you feel like it's going to take for the the switch to turn on for Russell Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett in this offense? That's a great question. I I haven't seen it yet. I was there week two. It was after their week one debacle in Seattle when Hackett tried to kick a 64-yard field goal. And then you've seen pieces throughout the year of, you know, last game. They had a delay of game before a kickoff. I mean, those are things that shouldn't happen. They lead the league in penalties. It just seems like they always are stubbing their toe, whether it's a penalty or a play call or in the red zone where they've just been atrocious. They're last in the NFL scoring touchdowns in the red zone. They haven't put a full game together yet. I think that's what it's going to take. I mean, they're going to – I know it sounds like a cliche. they got to play 60 minutes, but – they have too many times where they go backwards on the field, whether it's the coach or the quarterback or a fumble, whatever the case may be. Uh, they haven't really been consistent through an entire game, and I think that's what it'll take to get them back on track. 
Andrew, we've covered kind of the things that everyone knows about the Titans, right? The different faces coming in on defense and, and still doing the same job and Derrick Henry's success on offense. Is there one thing in talking to this team and seeing this team a couple of times that does surprise you when you look at this specific Titans team versus past teams? You know, I wouldn't say surprise me, but I'll give you one here. When we were at practice before the Colts game, you know, trying to figure out why they're so good in the red zone each and every year. And we were able to watch some of their practice in the red zone and the attention to detail from the coaches and the players. I mean, I'm talking like inches of grass that they wanted to be on instead of other inches of grass. I was, that was really what struck me. It was just, okay, why is this team so good? Well, it's because they focus on that to, to the, the millimeter, if you will. And then we asked Ryan Tannehill about it before that game. And he said, he meets with the wide receivers every Saturday morning as an extra session just to really hammer home what they're thinking in the red zone. Hmm. I thought that was really uh, – that's what really struck me, that that's the level of care they go to. It's not just going through a walkthrough and repping plays and being like, okay, here we are. But they were all communicating so much about how they wanted to run one play, and they did that play after play after play during practice. So I was really impressed by that. Is it interesting in covering and, and, and calling this Titans game, this team, how they have a tendency to make you want to play their ball? You know, you mentioned the Kansas City game and how they played them, but they seem to kind of drag everybody to the shadows and say, hey, we're going to play this style of ball today. Yeah, look, it's not sexy. It's not going to light up a scoreboard. But if I'm a Titans fan, I absolutely love it. I mean, I think the style of play is exactly the style that their head coach played with. Um, and and they find ways to win, and I I think that's an easy team to root for. I mean, I don't need the the team that scores forty points and gives up thirty. I'd rather I I like this style of football if I'm a fan, and I think it's easy to rally around that. Um, I think it can be frustrating at times with the offense, knowing that they completed five passes last week. But I think in terms when you look at this defense, uh, it's a, it's a fun unit. Um, they make plays and. To me, that's a style that wins, and, and Rabel's results of getting to the playoffs uh, prove it. Andrew Catalan has been our guest. Catch Andrew Catalan along with James Lofton and Amanda Renner this Sunday as the Titans take on the Broncos on the NFL on CBS. Uh, Andrew, appreciate the time as always, Absolutely. and uh, enjoy Nashville. Yeah, I always do. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Andrew. Awesome. All right. Thank you. There is Andrew Catalan with us on the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline.